So as you all know, this is Sandy, Sandy Blaine. She um, is our writer today, wrote Yoga for Computer Users. Um, how many of you here have any kind of wrist trouble from working at a computer for long hours? I don't know, programming? <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? Well, great. Well, Sandy today is going to talk about her book, which shows a lot of useful tips on just some very simple things you can do at your desk that are based in the world of yoga, which will help to relieve that pressure and hopefully prevent injury into the future. She's also going to be seated right here, leading some stretches so that you can actually experience them and learn how to do these stretches on your own. Okay, so as soon as she gets mic'd up here, um, Sandy's going to talk. All right, so um, I have a couple questions for people. Um, how many people here already do some yoga? I'd like to. Okay, so maybe about half. Okay. How many people are watching the Olympics? <laughs> Did anybody, we're down in the South Bay now, but if you read the San Francisco Chronicle, there was an article today about um, all the older athletes that are competing this year. Did anybody see that article? <laughs> One person. I'm going to send the link to Jessica because it was a really good article about how aging is changing and how exercise keeps your, can really keep your body young, can, can seriously retard the aging process and how differently we're starting to think about aging and the science that they're doing on that. And there is an exercise component and kind of stress and lifestyle components of that also. Thank you. Okay. So, let's see, of those that don't uh, practice yoga, um, how many do some other kind of regular exercise program, or even semi-regular? Uh, all right, so of those who do a different type of exercise, how many have regular stretching as part of that regimen? Okay, all right. And let's see, how many people think of stretching um, as painful, equate stretching with pain, sir. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a normal thing that I hear a lot from people is, oh, it's so painful, I would do it, but it's, it, it's so painful. Um, I'm gonna talk about that, although it looks like it's not a huge issue for this group, it's always an issue for some people. So, um, but a lot of people here already do practice yoga, so, of those that, uh, that do, there's a lot of different reasons that we practice. So can you hear me if I, yeah, can you hear me if I step away? So there's a lot of great, <laughs> there's a lot of different reasons that we practice yoga, but how many people would say that, that one of the reasons that you, that you keep practicing, that you make it a part of your life is, is because it makes you feel good, just for that simple reason, that it makes you feel good? Yeah, okay. So I think we want to talk about why that is a little bit, but uh, what are some of the other reasons? Anyone? Flexibility. Increased flexibility. Yeah. Why is that good? Anyone? Avoid injuring yourself if you're flexible. Hmm? You avoid injuring yourself. You're less injury prone. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. Relaxation. For relaxation, to help combat stress, to be more relaxed, absolutely. Yeah, well, we all know why that's good, right? <laughs> Anything else? Okay, so why is more, why is more flexibility a good thing? There, um, less injury prone is definitely one reason. Anything else? Better circulation. Better circulation, that's actually true. Better circulation of oxygen and blood to your muscles. That is, that is true, right? <laughs> If you're into sports, it improves your performance in all kinds of ways. So if you're a runner, faster is one of those. Uh, how come? I don't know. I mean, I know firsthand that it did, but I don't know. Yeah, but you really notice that. And that's a lot of why we, we stay with yoga, is that it's an experiential thing. But I'll just give it a dramatic example. How about um, if you're a runner? So I worked with football players, and I worked with some. I worked with basketball players when I was at Cal, and then I worked with football players. Uh, my yoga studio is in Alameda, and the um, Oakland Raiders training facility is nearby, and I've worked with them some. And some of them really noticed with regular yoga um, that their throwing arm. That, the, that was easier, and so that it improved their throwing distance. And that just has to do with range of motion, right? So if you're a person with uh, really tight hamstrings, it affects your stride distance. That's one reason, right? So 
If you have, say, sort of average level flexibility and you can get to 90 degrees, lying on the floor, you can bring your leg up to 90 degrees straight, and it's kind of average flexibility, that's going to shrink over time as you age, right? And um, your muscles get shorter, and that affects your stride distance, right? Whereas if you increase your flexibility, you take bigger steps. It's easier to take bigger steps. And here's the bigger thing. It takes less energy to take those steps, right? Because any time that you do a movement that requires, right, any time you do a movement, actually, you are elongating one set of muscles and contracting the opposing muscles, right? So your, any, any, any stretch that you do, right, any, even the smallest stretch, so raising your arm overhead. Now, for some people, that's not that easy. But it is a stretch that we do in everyday life, whether it's because that's the one that makes us feel good or because we have to reach something. Right? Um, but we do that all the time. And so when you're elongating one set of muscles, the opposite set of muscles is contracting. It's just really simple, basic physiology. And um, if your muscles stretch more easily, the opposing muscles don't have to contract as hard for you to make those movements. So movement is easier. And that's how stretching and yoga lead to greater ease of movement. Now, People who do yoga, you experience that whether or not you've defined it. Probably you don't define it. You just know, oh, I feel better. But one of the reasons that you feel better is that you're walking around with more ease. Your body moves more easily because you have better range of motion. You have to use less energy to pull your skeleton around. Right? And all of that does lead to feeling better in your body. That greater ease of movement makes it an easier experience to move around. So. Um, that does translate to athletic performance, but it also translates to quality of life, just basic quality of life, whether or not you are an athlete. It makes a huge difference. And as you age, that's a big thing. And it's really interesting to talk about, to see this article about the athletes, the athletes in the Olympics, and how, I mean, there's so, if you're watching, there's a 33-year-old gymnast this year. I mean, that's unheard of. And there's people in their 50s competing. Everybody's heard about the 41-year-old swimmer, but there's people in their 50s competing who, um, say that they're in better shape than ever, and it just really changes our idea about what's possible in terms of quality of life as we age, and I, I think that is really important. Um, so here's another question before we anyway, start uh, moving a little bit. How many people who, um, who do practice yoga, and there's a lot of you here today, how many took to it right away? I thought, oh, this is great, right away. OK, a small number, that's right. How many people um, thought, oh, this is pretty tough, but I'm going to stick with it, right? So and with practice, it's not so tough, right? The movements get easier. But there's also this retraining um, period that happens. When you first start stretching, there's a retraining period that happens where your body learns to interpret, reinterpret those intense sensations that maybe were pretty intense at first and something to cope with, right? Even if you weren't thinking pain, right? Um, that there's something to cope with. And, but very shortly, into a regular yoga practice, weeks, months of regular practice, your nervous system really learns to reinterpret those intense signals as something that makes you feel better, right? That's, and starts to welcome that stretching. And, and then it becomes kind of addictive, right? And it's really hard to, get, hard to give it up. So, um, so people who practice yoga, is that mostly a yoga class, one or two yoga classes during the week? Yeah. DVDs. DVDs, yeah. Did you learn from a DVD? Or actually, my first class was a paper yoga class. Yeah. I still liked it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's a whole different thing. <laughs> that's a whole different topic. That's beyond the scope of today's talk. But, um, but I think actually DVDs are a great way. It, you can't learn yoga from a book or from a DVD or really even from watching somebody dem demonstrate. You really have to get some indiv individual attention, I think, to really know what you're doing. But once you have a sense of what you're doing, 
They're a great way to keep your practice going so that you don't just practice at class, that you, you have something that you do every day. Because if you, if you take yoga and you go to a class an hour, once or twice a week, that's great. But the benefits are cumulative. And if you can do something every day, even 15 minutes every day on your own, that's, a huge, that's really a huge thing. You really start to notice a lot more benefit. Do people practice on their own? People, DVD, a few DVD. Let's see a show of hands on that. It's very rare, actually. So that's pretty good. OK. <laughs> so one more question, actually. And that is, um, how many people here, I, I, probably a lot, but just a show of hands, how many people are here because they do notice that the being at the computer all day takes a toll on the body. Is that why most people are here today? Yeah, <laughs> two hands for some people, yeah. Yeah, me too, you know? I'm a yoga teacher, but I'm also a writer, and I'm at the computer way more than I ever would have expected. And I thought, I remember when I first got email in 1993, which was, you know, on the early side. I was at Pixar then, I had two siblings in grad school, and they were both doing field work in other countries, and I could talk to them by email every day, and it was a miracle. I thought, this is great. Who knew <laughs> that it was going to become so ubiquitous? Well, probably people here did know, but uh, <laughs> right, the, right, the people here were probably at Stanford at the time, and they did absolutely know. But, um, <laughs> but who knew that it was going to be all day, every day at the computer. And that email and all of that was going to take up so much of our daily lives. And it's really hard to get away from. It is hard for me to stop when there's five more emails to answer or when I think I can get one more thing done. It is hard for me to stop and take a stretching break. But I do think it's so important. And I, I really think that's the number one thing you can do is to, throughout your day, take some breaks to stretch. Because um, there are risks involved in ignoring that toll that it's taking on our bodies. There are more health risks than just discomfort. But just plain old discomfort. Um, who wants to live with that if we don't have to? right? If you could feel better, you're happier, you're more productive. There's all kinds of benefits to just, just simple feeling better. So we're going to get into doing um, some exercise in just a, a minute or two. But I have some, um, some things to say about just being careful as you stretch. So what I think we want to create for ourselves is a preventive program. Because RSI, repetitive stress injuries, when they really set in, that's a serious thing. You know, We should never be ignoring the, that buzzing and tingling. Or even the tightness, when it starts to be really nagging, we shouldn't, that's a signal that you need to stop and do some counter movements for your body. Because if nerve damage actually sets in, it's, there's no consistently reliable cure for that. And I know actually a fair number of people, and, and people who work here probably do as well, people who have had to really make radical changes, had radical changes forced on them in terms of career, in terms of the ability to work at the computer because of RSI, you know, that, there's just no guarantee that that can be reversed. So prevention is so much more effective than any cure. And um, so that, that's number one. Yoga is really wonderful preventative medicine. It can help with a lot of things. But the key, the key word there is prevention. And I want to say, if anybody here is currently symptomatic, has serious RSI, you know, um, pain, um, that they're dealing with now, you have to be very careful about stretching in any program that you do. You really want to be talking to doctors and physical therapists and not just jumping into a yoga program because the same things that are good for prevention are not necessarily recommended for nerve damage that's already in, at play, you know, that's, that's already set in. Sometimes it does work, but it is very individual, and it can, for some people, exacerbate existing conditions. So if that does describe you today, I want to say that um, work carefully. Don't do anything that feels like it's aggravating your condition. And check in with your body after each stretch. If it seems like it's helping, great. But I would just be, I would just be cautious. Um, so the other thing is that we don't want to do anything that hurts, really. So that's why I asked the question about do you equate stretching with, with pain? It seems like people here, the majority are, are accustomed to some kind of stretching. But 
Stretching is, uh, the sensation of stretching really is different from pain. And one of the, the key components of practicing yoga well is to really listen to your body. And so one of the things that means is paying attention to signals from the body that say, oh, you should be backing off, you should maybe modify this, and really listening to your own body as you stretch. And while that seems obvious, it's actually hard for us, I think, not to do what we're being told to do, not to do what everybody else is doing. It, it can be difficult, but pain truly is the body's healthy defense mechanism. And it's, it's in place to tell you when something is wrong. So we do all know the difference between stretching and pain. We can tell the difference. But uh, it's really learning to listen to that. Um, so we want to we wanna make sure that we do that as we stretch. Um, The key to a successful yoga practice, I think, is gentle persistence. It's not going full out every time. It's consistently working with your own body, paying attention to what it's telling you. And you know that your range of motion and your comfort level in the stretches is going to increase over time with regular practice. So the idea isn't that you have to do it all today or all at any one yoga class, that it's a lifetime practice, so something that you can do to take care of yourself. OK, and then finally, I'd say the most important thing is, as we stretch, is to keep breathing. So relaxed breath is the essence of a good yoga practice. And it's good to know what's happening with our breath and to be mindful of it in any stretch, in any exercise that we do, in fact, but in any stretch. Um, Access to your to fuller breath capacity is really one of the greatest benefits of yoga. And I think that's the other reason that we do feel a lot better after yoga practice is that your muscles huh? Okay. Right, that your muscles um, move more easily and your lungs expand more fully. And in fact, we'll work with that in a moment. Um, your lungs expand more fully, and when they expand more easily and fully you get more breath. And there are great mental and nervous system benefits to more breath, but the, the first thing we notice is the physical benefit. It doesn't take a scientist to know that when you get more breath into your system, you are getting more oxygen into your cells, and that right, creates uh, more energy and makes us feel better and kind of uplifts us after yoga practice. And if we could bring that into our daily lives at work, take say two 10 or 15 minute breaks a day at work and have that same feeling, that would be great. I mean, it would really, I think, improve our, our quality of life at, on the job. So um, let's just do a couple of simple things before uh, we do deeper stretches. So first of all, I think it's really good if you sit right at the edge of your chair now. And now, I'm going to talk a little bit about posture, but not right away. So you're going to sit right at the edge of your chair. And you do sit up tall and plant your feet on the floor. Okay. Right away, we do feel a little better. Even though it's hard to maintain that healthy posture for a variety of reasons, we do feel more energized right away when we do that. And that is that has to do with breath as well. That there's a breath component to that. And let's go ahead and just roll our shoulders out a couple times. I, so this is something everybody knows how to do. We don't always remember to do it. Right? Now, in almost everything in yoga, we do both directions, both sides. Here's one, though, where we really only need to go this direction, because none of us need to learn to go that way. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we're going to roll our shoulders down and back, maybe three more times. And now start to go for way back and way down. So you just increase your range of motion a little bit, way back and way down. OK. So go ahead and pause there. And one of the things this article that I saw in the Chronicle today, which is a really good timing, um, and, um, and one reason that um, 
that I'm going to send the link to Jessica to send to all of you is that they discuss yoga as one of the things that you can do. But another one is that they talk about doing things differently, right? That this is good for both your body and your brain to slow down aging. And that's something I teach as well. And we'll just uh, look at a simple, really simple example of that. We're going to clasp our hands. You just interlace your fingers. So now, first of all, you interlace your fingers. Those who do yoga know this probably, but you have a natural way that you do everything, right? A natural way that you do everything, and we're just going to change that by moving every finger over one. Now, if you've done that in yoga, it's not dramatic, but if you've never done that before, it feels a little weird, right? It feels a little weird the first few times you do the opposite way. And that's just, you have really set neuromuscular patterns from the very first moments you start developing. And then those patterns get reinforced and you do the same thing over and over again. It has to do with your dominant side, but also has to do with just how you did it first, right? So now we've got our hands clasped, whichever way they're clasped, and we're going to roll our wrists around, okay? Just simple. Roll our wrists around. Now, there's lots of the exercises that we're going to do today. Um, are ones that you could do at your desk. And in fact, some of them you could do while you're at your computer screen if you don't need your hands. If you're looking at something and you're going to be looking at it for a few minutes, you can do this or this the whole time, right, if you don't need your hands. And actually, it's great for your brain to do two different things at once. I think we all do that a little too much. And probably the person who hit me was maybe doing a couple too many things at once. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but <laughs> the... Um, yeah, and maybe I was thinking about you know where I was going a little bit too much too. But um, the uh, but doing two things at once and just challenging your brain a little bit to do things differently is really good. Now, how many people do this? We're going to keep rolling because it's great for your wrists. It's great for your hands and wrists, and it's very soothing. This is safe for everybody, right? Soothing, feels good. How many people do this kind of thing? You can take both hands up, right? No, it's a brand new thing for most people. So notice how, even though it's something you've never done before, first of all, there's a natural figure eight, OK? There's kind of this natural figure eight that happens when you roll your wrists around. Try and reverse it now. Just go back the other way. Right? And what you'll notice, and I think pretty much everybody is going to notice, first of all, it's a little bit of a brain teaser. You can practically feel that other, that, uh, right, different part of your brain lighting up and trying to catch on to that because it's not natural. The other thing is that even if it's something you've never done before, you have a natural direction, which I think is fascinating, right? You have a natural direction that your body goes, right? And reversing it is a little bit challenging, but with practice, it's easy. And it's really good to have those options just physically for our physical structure not always going with the path of least resistance, but opening up more pathways, more neural pathways, is good for your body, is good for your mind. Right? OK, now you're going to switch your hands back. Right? And then just roll around again whatever way is natural. Right? And is that true? There's kind of a natural, a natural pattern. Right? Can you reverse it again? OK, and then go ahead. That's plenty of that. Let's roll the shoulders around again. Two really simple things you could do anytime. Now, let's go ahead, and I'm going to mirror you. You're going to take your right arm up. And I'm going to reach it up as high as you can. And then you can turn it slightly. You can actually take your left hand right toward the top of your arm, near your shoulder. And you're going to roll it in. Your thumb is pointing in toward your face. You're going to roll that arm in so that your palm starts to face back. So you roll toward your thumb, basically. Yeah. And then, no, that was right, the other way. There we go. <laughs> OK. So, so that as you roll, your thumb's going to turn out, your palm's going to turn back. Now lift your arm up. And just that by itself is a good stretch. But you're going to drop your hand behind your head. And wherever it comes to is fine, right? You're going to again roll the arm a little bit, lift it up, and then take your left hand to your elbow. Now, you never want to be forceful with these stretches. You're going to press your elbow into your hand, let your hand drop behind your back, and just breathe. Press your elbow into your hand as if you were trying to lift your hand up with your elbow. Let the hand relax behind your back, and just breathe into your chest and your shoulder. Do your best to keep your head just in neutral. And in yoga, that's crown of the head over the tailbone, face forward. Chin just slightly dropped, just because we all tend to lift from the chin. 
And take one more breath in. And then exhale to come out of this, just draw the elbows apart and let the arms drop. Really simple. Okay, so just from that one stretch, if you sit here, you can feel a difference in your sides. Part of that is the breath. More breath goes into that side because the muscles are, are giving way more easily, right? And the other thing that we feel is a natural urge to do the other side, right? Really strong natural urge. It feels weird to sit here out of balance. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll talk about why that is. So we're gonna lift the arm up, reach it up, then take your right hand to your tricep muscles near the shoulder. You're gonna lift the arm up, roll it so that the palm turns back, and then the hand can drop easily behind the head. Okay, I'm gonna roll the arm, lift it, keep it lifted, and take the right hand and place it on the left elbow. And you're gonna press your elbow into your hand and just lift up. Lift the elbow up as if you were gonna push your hand up to the ceiling using your elbow. And let your breath flow into that space between the ribs and up into the side chest and armpit. And one more breath. And then exhale to come out. Right. And just drop the arms. I'm going to roll the shoulders in between stretches because it just helps things from getting caught. Often we get injuries coming in and out of stretches because bones aren't in alignment when you start. So you just want to make sure that they are. Everything comes back to neutral in between. Now we're going to add on to that. So we're going to bring the right arm up. We'll get to that, through that first part a little faster. I'm going to take your hands around your tricep, roll the arm in, lift it up, drop the hand behind the back. Then go ahead and place the hand on the elbow, lift the elbow up, and now you're gonna lean to the side, and you're gonna lean to the left, and you keep pressing your hand and your elbow together. So you really press it up with the elbow into the palm. It's a little bit of an isometric movement here. You're gonna breathe into your right side. Yeah. Press into your feet, and don't, don't lift up off of your right sit bone. You wanna keep the whole pelvis grounded on the chair. And you're going to breathe into that side. OK. And then inhale and come back up. And exhale and again, let the elbows drop. And again, we can feel that dramatic difference between our sides, right, and the urge to do the other side. So one point I want to make, only a few people thought of stretching as painful. Probably this stretch didn't feel painful. Even if it was a big stretch for you, that's pretty much the universal feel good one is the stretch here. But that urge to do the other side is one of your uh, body's ways of knowing that's a healthy movement, right? That's not pain. If you have that urge to balance out, that would never happen with something that was actually painful. You would never be feeling that if somebody socked you in the shoulder, right? That's, you know, the body does want to be balanced, but it wants to be balanced in a healthy way. So, so while pain is the body's defense mechanism to tell you something's wrong and you want to really listen to that, you also want to listen to, do I feel better afterwards? Do I want to do the other side? Is this a, something that is healthy for me, makes me feel better? So doing that second side, reaching up, hand onto the tricep, roll the arm in, lift it up, keep it lifted as you drop your hand behind your back, and then bring your hand your palm to your left elbow, press your left elbow up, and then keep pressing up as you lean to the right. right. Pressing your elbow into your hand and breathing into your left side. And just let your breath be relaxed and natural it's gonna naturally move into those stretching spaces and just feel that happen. Good. And then inhale and come up and out and exhale and release the arms and roll the shoulders out. All right, now, um, we're, we've been sitting for a while and kind of our natural instinct when we're sitting, when you're just listening, is to sit back like this, right? 
which is fine when you're just relaxing. Um, is it good to sit this way all day? No, it's really, it's really not good to sit this way all day. Um, it's hard on your body. Um, so we're just going to talk a little bit about the yoga approach to good posture, because I think that's something that's not well understood. And um, it makes a big difference in, uh, in terms of getting a healthy starting point for your stretches. So um, first of all, you need to have a chair that's the right size for you. And chairs, these folding chairs, are the same size, but we're all different sizes. These are probably short for the taller people. So just be aware of that. If when you sit at the edge of your chair, your knees are kind of up and your pelvis is still pitched back, that's, that's not what you want in the chair that you use for yoga in general. You really want to get your knees to drop a little bit below your hips. So you want to make sure your chair is the right height for you, whether you're sitting at your computer, whether you're doing yoga. That gets into the era of ergonomics. And I'm really not an ergonomics expert. The yoga approach, though, is always to have the hips above the legs, right? Is to let the, so that the pelvis can move very easily over the legs. And I'm gonna turn sideways to explain why. So, healthy posture comes from the hip sockets. And that's the thing I think that a lot of people don't realize. So we all know we're supposed to sit up tall, even though we don't when we're at the computer or watching TV, we kind of all know we're supposed to. But that movement comes from the hip sockets. It comes from this movement of the pelvis rolling over the legs. Yes, exactly. And that's where that comes from. So if your pelvis is pitched back like so, and that can be for a whole variety of reasons. One, your chair is too low for you, right? Two, you have weak core muscles, weak abdomen, low back is another reason. Three, tight hips and hamstrings that impede the movement of the pelvis so that it doesn't move easily over the hip sockets. Any or all of those things can cause the pelvis to pitch back like that. If your pelvis is pitched back like that and you try and sit up from your spine, it doesn't work. But we, a lot of people do it and we do really have a huge number of back problems because of that. Because we try and sit up tall from these little muscles and joints of the low back. When it really needs to happen, these are the biggest joints in the body, the biggest muscles, it needs to happen from here. And you can see that as I, as I do it. But I, I think that unless you know, it is a little bit mysterious, you want to get optimum movement here so you're always sitting up from the hip sockets. And if that's very difficult for you, a little bit of height under your seat right, is going to make a lot of difference. Okay. So from there, let's do with sitting up tall. Let's do a little bit more stretching. So just simple things, again, that you can do at your desk. Nothing too dramatic. So we're going to take our arms out. And can you still hear me? Right? Not. So take your arms out. And they're going to be right down right, below your shoulders. Yeah. And what we want to do is internally rotate the arms, which is different than what we did before. And it means your shoulders will curl forward a little bit. That movement that I just scoffed at a little bit ago, you're going to let that happen. You're going to roll the shoulders in. And then you take your right arm behind you. And that's why you, one reason you need to be sitting forward on your chair. But don't, don't worry. You won't need a lot of space. But you just take that arm back behind you, right arm back. And you're going to internally rotate a little bit more. Let the shoulder curl forward a little bit more. And then flip that arm up. And reach your right hand towards your left hip. Okay. And then you're going to try and take hold of your left bicep, but whatever you can reach is fine. Elbow, wrist, whatever you can reach is great. You get hold wherever you can of that arm. Maybe it's your wrist if you have big, strong shoulders. Right? And then you'll flip the left hand up. And again, you'll catch wherever you can. You catch the forearm. You catch the elbow. You know, whatever you, whatever you can catch. If you do get your elbows, really wrap your hands around. If you don't, no big deal. But you just want to walk your hands a little bit further toward the elbows. And then sit up tall. Right? And draw the elbows down and lift the chest. And you're going to feel your pectoral muscles spreading out and stretching. Even if you do yoga, you'll probably feel some pretty nice stretch from this. And if you don't, you know, it might be a little more dramatic. right? Don't force, but this does open the lungs. And you should be able to feel a little more breath coming higher into the chest, higher into the lungs. You want me to look? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so OK. And sitting up tall. Good. And take another breath in. 
and you're gonna draw your elbows down, lift your heart. Now the heart, of course, is on the left side, but in yoga, it's right in the center. It's a different theory of anatomy. So you wanna just lift up from there, and then drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. And as you do, you let your left elbow draw down a little bit. Now, this can be a big stretch, so back off if you need to. You really always wanna to listen to that, and listen to that sensation. Just let the head hang from those stretching muscles as much as feels comfortable. Try and resist the urge to capsize over with the shoulders. The more level the shoulders stay, the better the next stretch. And now just let go of your face, as if your face could be a really loose jaw dropping. So the lower jaw hangs toward the floor. And take one more breath in. And then out, letting the muscles relax as you breathe out. And then inhale, and let your head come up. And exhale and release your arms and roll your shoulders out. And what's good after neck stretches is to make little bobble heady movements with your, yeah, so let the neck come back to neutral. And you do really want to take it easy with neck stretches. They only go to the point that feels good because neck is delicate and, you know, obviously has the most important job, right? So, all right, so let's uh, do the other side, of course. So both arms are gonna come out to the sides. You're gonna internally rotate the arms. And then this time, the left arm is gonna reach behind your back. It's gonna reach towards your right hip. And then you're gonna take your right arm further back. Try and get hold of your elbow or bicep, forearm, wrist, whatever you can actually catch without too much strain. And then get a good grip and walk your hands further toward the elbows, or if you have the elbows, all the way around. So it's just, you know, might look like this, right? And that's fine. And then from here, we'll sit up tall, right? Draw your elbows down, lift your heart, the yoga heart, and let breath come into that space. So there's a whole lot of space around the heart, and letting the breath come in, into that space. Yeah. And taking one more before we add the next stretch. And so this time, right, it'll be left ear toward left shoulder. Shoulders stay level. And as the head drops and shoulders stay level, draw the elbows down. Lift the chest. <sighs> Letting your breath flow into those stretching muscles so that with each breath in, you feel a little more space in the side of your neck and where the neck attaches to the shoulder. And with each exhalation, Those muscles let go just a little bit more. And one more. And then inhale. And let your head come up. And exhale. Release your arms. Roll your shoulders out. Move your head around a little bit. All right. Now, we're actually gonna take a moment to close our eyes, maybe four or five breaths. No, it's not a long meditation or anything. Just four or five breaths to sit up tall and tune in. We're gonna continue to stretch after this, but I really wanna tune in and see how we feel. If you're not used to sitting up at the edge of your chair like this, perhaps your back is tired. If it was a lot of stretch for you, you know, perhaps you feel that. Just notice what you do feel. You know, what your real experience is and what the changes are from having done those few stretches. And let your breath slow down and see if, as you let your breath slow down, your mind can slow down as well. There's often this idea with meditation that we're supposed to get rid of our thoughts, but in fact, that's impossible. You just wanna let it slow down so the mind's not quite so busy, so that we're not so caught up in our thoughts.
We'll follow just one more breath with complete awareness, following the inhalation and noticing where it goes, noticing the movements inside the body as the breath flows in. Following your exhalation all the way out and sitting up really tall to your full height as the exhalation flows out to completion. And at the same time, as you sit up taller, relax your shoulders. And then open your eyes again. So one point I want to make is that those who do practice yoga, one of the obstacles, I think, one of the biggest obstacles to practice is that we often think, oh, I don't have an hour. So you know, I don't have an hour to practice. I, there's no point. But actually, and hopefully you can feel that. Now, we've just done a couple of stretches, just a few. But even a little bit can make a huge difference. It certainly creates change. Any amount of stretch and breathing and just mindfulness creates change. But a little bit can really go a long way. And especially if you are regular, again, those benefits are cumulative. So I mean, can we notice that? Are we noticing that You know, the more energy, more breath equation? Good. So let's, so we've done a lot for the shoulders and upper body. And let's do um, a little bit for hips and legs, um, which is a big part of being comfortable sitting for a long time. So here's a, a simple version of this. Now, if you're not used to stretching your hips, this might be one of those stretches where there's a lot of sensation, right? I, of course, don't call it pain. I don't use that term, good pain. Pain, bad. But, um, <laughs> but, but a, a lot of sensation. So you're going to take it easy and go in stages. We're going to take the right ankle and cross it over the left knee, just like this. All right. And one important component of these kind of stretches where you cross the leg is to keep the foot flexed. That stabilizes the ankle and the knee. So you really want to not let the foot just roll like that. You want to keep it flexed and press out through your heel. Okay. Now, for a lot of us, the knee is going to be way up. You don't want to push the leg down. That healthy movement comes from the hip sockets. And if you're sitting on a chair that's too low for you, you don't want to go too far with this. You want to wait until you have something that's the right height for you before you do this exercise. But we are going to sit up really tall. You're going to try and sit up from the hip sockets. Go ahead and take your hands to your hips. And imagine you could just pull your pelvis right up off your legs. And then see if the right leg will relax a little bit. Again, you don't push it toward the floor. You certainly never push on your knee. But just see if you can relax a little bit in that outer hip. And do some of us already feel some sensation in that hip when we sit up? Yeah. So a few people. And then what you want to do to get those outer hip muscles to stretch is just lean forward. And it's not to go down low. You actually want to think of pulling your third eye or the, maybe the hairline right to the front of the room, right up here. And you just pull yourself forward. And when it feels like enough stretch in the hip, you stop. And that might be just a very little bit. Again, you want to be careful if you're sitting on something that's on the low side. This chair's the perfect height for me. I'm five foot two. So just you know, be aware. Right? And shoulders back, crown of the head forward. You're going to breathe. And your hands are on your hips. You're breathing right into where that right hand is. So OK, perfect. Thank you. I was going to ask. So, um, so you're going to breathe in right into where your right hand is. And then if this is a, not a lot of stretch for you, if it's mild and feels like your body wants more, then you can hang down. Oh, there's a the microphone. Then you, can <laughs> then you can just hang down and let your head drop. Only do that if it feels like a good idea. But in that case, you can really let your head drop toward the floor. Yeah. OK. Now, to come up, keep your head down. Bring your hands back to your hips if you hung them forward. And then inhale and come up. One, one movement. And then to come out, I'm going to take your right hand under your knee. Yeah. OK. And then cross your other ankle, because we definitely want to do the other side of that. Now, again, this stretch for some people might have been more along that harder, right? that more intense. But again, you can really feel your body wanting to do that other side, which is just something to notice. If that was an intense one for you, right? there is still your body knows the difference between that intensity of something that's good and that's going to create more space, make you feel healthier and better later, even if it's a little challenging during. So hands on the hips, sit up tall, flex that left foot, right? And then you decide how much you want to lean forward. And it may just be, right, a little bit, head coming forward. 
If you're more flexible and this is easier for you, get as much length as you can before you hang forward. And when you've reached your maximum length, if you want to drop forward, you can go ahead and do that. And if you do, really relax your head. Just drop your head. How about three more breaths, wherever you are in it? And then bring your hands to your hips and inhale right up. Take your hand under your knee to lift it up, uncross. OK. Now, are there any questions? Because we're, we're just about coming to a close, and I want to just find out if there's any questions. Yes? You know, you're on the taller side, I can tell just from looking at you. So I would say the first thing for you is to do it sitting up on something that really lifts you up. And, um, and then you start out very slow on this. I would just say start very slow, just do a little bit. But that, that's the big thing is that if you're doing it and instead of being up here, you're down here, then you're going to be moving more from the back than the hip sockets. And that's not, that's not what we want. So you need to get something that's the right height. That's my first piece of advice. Anything else? OK. Let's do a last stretch then before we, before we end. So um, if you can just separate your chairs enough that you can turn to, actually, you know what? That's going to be too hard. Let's just do this. Cross the right ankle, right knee over. We'll do that. Stay sitting at the edge of your chair. And we'll do a simple twist. You're going to, with your knee over, you're going to cross your left arm, bring it to the outside. And then take your right hand back. You don't need to go real low for this. You're going to take your right hand back to the seat of your chair. You're going to press the left arm and the right leg together and sit up really tall as you twist. And you can use your arm to guide, but don't yank yourself around. And breathing. You're going to sit up tall. And exhale and turn. And inhale and lengthen. And exhale and turn. And one more breath. And it's just little increments. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, turn. And then release. OK. And second side, left ankle over. Sit up tall, right arm across. OK. Left hand behind you. Press your arm and your leg together. Sit up very tall. Lengthen. And for five or six breaths, you're going to inhale and lengthen your spine. Exhale, gently turn. And one more breath, and then exhale and turn forward. Okay. Last thing that we're going to do, and you're going to need a little room in front of you here. You're going to plant your feet nice and wide. You're going to bring your elbows to your knees, and you're going to lean forward. And you want to be right at the edge of your chair for this. You want to be moving from the hip sockets if at all possible. Now, if you have that issue that you feel like mm, this maybe is uh, hard on my back, or um, this is a lot for me. This is, all, this is as much of a forward bend as you need to do, so be aware of that. Only if it feels like it would be good to go deeper do you need to release all the way into it. So this is stage one. Feel free to stay here. If it would feel good, you can just relax. Drop your head. Drop your arms. Relax your elbows. Relax your neck. And especially relax your neck. So more than anything else, use this stretch to release back and shoulder, back and shoulder tension, release neck tension.
and follow one more breath all the way out. And then bring your hands to your thighs and inhale and push yourself up. Okay. The last thing I want to say before we end is that, you know, yoga is for everyone. We don't have to be super flexible or an acrobat or even exercise inclined to get the benefits of yoga. Um, the exercises we've done today are really meant to be gentle and accessible. Things that you can do easily at your desk and things that, things that anybody can do and get the benefit from. And I, I think that the future of yoga, more than power yoga or hot yoga, even though you know, those things are great and fun and they have their benefits, but the, the future is really gentle yoga for healthy aging and for improving quality of life in that way. The, you know, the power yoga stuff, it's more like marathon running, not, you know, most of us aren't gonna go there. Most, peop mo most people aren't gonna go there. But the, the real benefits of yoga are, are really available to everybody. And again, it's a lifetime practice of something that we can do to take care of ourselves, improve quality of life and longevity. And the person who mentioned athletic performance, it's great if we could extend that farther into our lives, whatever that performance is, whether it's athletic or whether it's our ability to be healthy at work, it's great if we can extend that later in our lives. And I, and I really think we can. So I, I hope that um, I've given you some things that you can do on your own. There's more in the book, and I know that the book is available um, from Jessica and Claire. And um, thank you very much for your attention today. <laughs>